Khalid ibn al-Walid was born in the Arabian Peninsula in the city of Mecca. It is believed he was born around the year 592 AD. At that time Prophet Muhammad was around 22 years old. Khalid was not a Muslim when the Prophet Muhammad began preaching in Mecca. He initially opposed the Prophet and fought against the early Muslims in several battles. However, he eventually converted to Islam. The exact date of his conversion is not known, but Khalid's age would have been around the mid-30s. From there on Khalid was a highly skilled general who is considered one of the greatest military leaders in history. He was known for his bravery and tactical prowess on the battlefield, and he played a key role in the early military conquests of the Islamic Empire. It is said he has won over 100 battles and never lost. Now with the introduction being over, let's go straight to the accusations. Some Muslims, primarily from the Shia Islam perspective, accuse Khalid ibn al-Walid of rape and murder, among other things. Here are some textual references regarding some accusations. First one is from Sahih Bukhari, narrated Salim's father. The Prophet sent Khalid bin al-Walid to the tribe of Jadima, and Khalid invited them to Islam, but they could not express themselves by saying, Aslamna, we have embraced Islam. But they started saying, Sabana, Sabana, we have come out of one religion to another. Khalid kept on killing some of them, and taking some of them as captives and gave every one of us his captive. When there came the day then Khalid ordered that each man should kill his captive, I said, By Allah, I will not kill my captive, and none of my companions will kill his captive. When we reached the Prophet, we mentioned to him the whole story. On that, the Prophet raised both his hands and said twice, O oh Allah, I am free from what Khalid has done. Here is another reference Umar told Khalid, You enemy of Allah, you killed a Muslim man and thereafter took his wife. By Allah, I will stone you. Here is a reference from most popular Shia website. Khalid inaugurated his acceptance of Islam by behaving contrarily to the orders issued by the Messenger of Allah not to kill anyone. Khalid entered Mecca on the conquest day after having killed more than 30 men who belonged mostly to Quraysh although the Prophet had clearly instructed them not to kill anyone. So Khalid ibn al-Walid has been accused of cold-blooded murder, rape, disobeying the Prophet, and many other things. If true, these crimes are extreme and the punishment is execution, or at least prison. All Muslims can unanimously agree that the Prophet is just, no one is above the divine law, not even Khalid ibn al-Walid. So if these accusations are true, why didn't the Prophet punish Khalid ibn al-Walid? Simple logic. I have to repeat this point again. Why didn't the Prophet punish Khalid for these heinous crimes? Rather, the Prophet kept Khalid at his post and trusted him with more duties after the accusations. For example, the expedition against Banu Jadima. This happened in the year 630 AD in January. This is where Khalid ibn al-Walid is accused of cold-blooded murder. Yet after this event the Prophet kept trusting Khalid with duties. Before dawn on February 1st, 630 the Muslims formed up in marching order to advance to Adas where they expected to engage the enemy. It was their intention to get through the defile of Hunayn before the enemy came to know of their movement. The advance guard again consisted of the Bani Salaam under Khalid, and behind it marched various Muslim units, including the group of 2,000 Meccans. The camp was left standing as the base of the operation. Another reference. In April 631 AD, Muhammad again sent Khalid on a second expedition to Dumatul Jandal to destroy the pagan idol, Wad. Khalid destroyed the statue as well as the shrine and killed those who resisted. One more reference which states the Prophet continued to trust Khalid. The Prophet Muhammad sent him to destroy a particularly important pagan idol in the oasis of Nakla and to negotiate with the powerful Banu Jadima tribe, which Khalid attacked without orders. Nevertheless, the Prophet continued to trust Khalid ibn al-Walid and soon sent him against the Arabian oasis town and power center of Dumat al-Jandal. We can all agree that Khalid ibn al-Walid was 1. A fallible that made mistakes 2. Prophet trusted him and gave him responsibilities till his death 3. Khalid was never punished by the Prophet 4. Khalid was never even demoted by the Prophet 5. Even after these accusations the Prophet kept trusting Khalid with Islamic duties. Hence, we come back to the question again. 
why didn't the Prophet punish Khalid ibn al-Walid? If the Prophet did not see any merit to punish him, not even to demote or relieve him of his duties, then there is nothing to question. If we accuse Khalid ibn al-Walid then we are unknowingly and directly accusing the Prophet for not being just and not enforcing the divine laws. Hence, either the narrations accusing Khalid ibn al-Walid were exaggerated or inaccurate, because we can't dare accuse the Prophet of disobeying the divine laws for a fallible. So in the end the logical conclusion is simple. If the Prophet didn't punish Khalid ibn al-Walid, then we have no choice but to trust the Prophet's judgment, and that the accusations cannot be fully authentic.